So you said uh, time, talent, talent, and, and treasure. treasure. I also offer you my tires. <laughs> Carpooling. I like it. And yep. And I offer you the gift of talk. Talk. Because uh, you know, true. with uh, Wicked Roadie every week. Welcome into 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're doing well. Today, uh, we have the newly installed or recently installed executive director of the United Way, Courtney Nicolato. And you are originally a Rhode Islander, but for the last, what, 13 years, yep. you were singing the stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Pawtucket, where oh, you're from. I am. I'm uh, from Pawtucket. That's right. Um, the, uh, but I still, thanks for coming to the car, hey, by know, the way. Great to have you me. here. This is a first to get you know picked up to do an interview in the car for me. It's so, an Uber with dignity. I, I like love to call it. it so. um, yeah. So I grew up in Pawtucket and um, went to St. Ray's and URI. So you are you know Rhode Island girl, born and bred. Um, but I had this amazing opportunity 13 years ago to go work at the American Heart Association National Center in okay. Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so now I will throw a y'all some point in this conversation That's okay. because I just can't help myself. And the fact that you're able to do that, yeah. meaning throw out the y'all yes. in the onlyville section of Providence. Right. And not be like brought up on any kind of criminal charges. That says a lot. That does say I a lot. I know. There's, so. there's, there is a... And I will roll my R, though, at mm -hmm. the same time. Oh, so, wow. you know, I have that, I can strike that right balance wow, between the two. Very impressive. Yes, that's, it's, uh, it's 13 years in the making. That's what it takes yeah. <laughs> to be an executive director yep. at the United Way of Rhode Island. And when I had Tony in the car, mm -hmm. I learned so much more. And I've done stuff with the United Way in the mm -hmm. past, but I learned so much more uh, just about, it's not necessarily people who are, you know, on, you know, down in their luck no. or their last dime that yep. are calling you. Uh, anybody can call you because yep. you guys are literally, and girls, yep. are literally just this hub of good stuff that's happening and information out there. I mean, Tony said he was going to be contacting for services regarding Medicare, mm -hmm. just signing up. So there's services for young and old. So give me that, that elevator pitch yep. of what the United Way is for those who don't know. So the United Way is a 94-year-old organization here in Rhode Island, and our focus is strengthening the community together. We want to mobilize the caring power of our community to do good. So yes, we absolutely help folks that are struggling to make ends meet, but we're also helping folks who are in life-changing decisions. Yeah. Like, you know, from Tony's perspective, it was, I just got my Medicare paperwork, and how the heck do I fill this out? Right. Um, we have lots of folks who are caring for an aging loved one, and they have to figure out what nursing home, or we have new parents that are trying to figure out daycares, and they can call our 211 um, hotline and get all of that information 24 hours a day. And I understand that you can call that number in a variety of languages as 200 well. plus. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. And you know, what we love about it is the 211 hotline gives us the opportunity to really understand what is happening in Rhode Island today. Right. So at any point in time, I know what the critical issues that are facing our Rhode Island community. And then we put that into our grant making. We grant make about um, four and a half to five million dollars every year. And that's through the generosity of the, our donors and investors in the Rhode Island community. And that goes to innovative nonprofit organizations who are just kicking butt yeah. in the Rhode Island community to serve our, um, our neighbors. And we do have a very strong, very thriving uh, nonprofit and, you know, uh, do good organizations in the community. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very rich. There's a lot of people out there who want to help. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the fact that you also take uh, information from various uh, points and you utilize it to help develop and cultivate uh, better outreach and better services in areas, yep. whether it be in Providence, whether it be in, uh, you know, Westerly, mm -hmm. Woonsocket, you know, Richmond, all the all the 39 different cities and towns that mm -hmm. we have, including Block Island. Including the block. That's right. We don't forget about you. We Not sail away on the Block Island ferry yep. year round. Yes. Uh, but you guys just, it, it really is incredible. So. How, how did you come to 
get involved in this. You were yeah. at the American Heart Association. Yep. You were down in Texas. I understand that you did not own a snow shovel. I did not. So your boys, who yeah. are 9 and 13, you nine just and want... 12, yep. 9 and 12, yep. 9 and 12. Almost 13. You're almost yeah. there, bud. Uh, yeah, yeah. You wanted to give them the experience of shoveling snow? I well, mean, is know, that why you came back? It was interesting. So, like, you know, I grew up... Um, I grew up in a neighborhood where I had a lot of people around me who would lift me up in my journey. I paid for, you know, I went to school full time and work full time just to make ends meet. And I had what I call, I jokingly call my lifter uppers okay. in my journey. These were coaches and teachers and, you know, family members and neighbors and others. And so I've, I've always felt like I love business, but I love mission. And I always felt this compelling desire, even though I have had this opportunity to, to build systems and nonprofit organizations and companies throughout the world. The desire was always to come home to Rhode Island. Um, I, when I first went to Texas, my husband and I were like, we'll go for a year and kind of see what happens. And 13 years later, cause life happens, sure. right? But we always came back. So my dad and mom both work for the state. Um, my brother is a labor, a part of the labor union here in the state. Sure. And so the, um, I always wanted to be, you know, closer to them. Sure. My kids came, we came back every year. We vacationed okay. every year. My kids love Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. My son likes, the, loves the Block Island Ferry. Yes. Like legit loves yeah. the Block Island Ferry. It's a good Ferry. boat. It is a great boat. Um, the Carol Jean, I think is their favorite. Okay. And, um, and so uh, I don't think it was a huge shock. Yeah. When, but they had never seen snow until last year. Wow. That was the first time ever. So, so be honest, hold on, be honest with me. <laughs> Did you occasionally, like, when you saw tweets or posts on Facebook that, you know, we're canceling school, like, three days in advance and there was a shortage of bread and milk, yeah. did you go online and just go, It's 70 today in Dallas? Ah, oh, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I was just down. We went uh, for, uh, during the holidays, we went down to Texas for a little bit to visit some friends, yeah. and it was, the weather was pretty fabulous i'm not gonna lie but well you're uh, getting off really well this year I, like, that, so last far year too, yeah absolutely. i feel like it was the, the nicolata welcome you know okay. winter mm -hmm. and so uh it was you know i think we had the kids had one school day off yeah. which was very upsetting to them not necessarily to me right. but it was to them and um you know the day that they did have was pretty fantastic my kids did snow angels for the first time and they did it with their head down versus up well, because you know, they didn't a, know what to do. It's a They're strategy. Texans. They're Texans. It's a strategy. We'll see how that played out. <laughs> I kept telling them, flip over, flip over. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So they figured it out eventually. So long as it wasn't yellow snow, they put their face down in. They, uh, I'm sure yes. they, they learned I'd explain about them that. what that was too. <laughs> so, so you've been here. You've been here for a little over a year now. Yep. You're, you're really getting into all the... Uh, well, I mean, not getting into it. You've been in all the different uh, elements that yep. are happening here in Rhode Island. Talk to me about the new year at the United Way 2020. What yeah. What is this meaning for you guys? Yeah, lots happening in United Way. And, you know, I think we are so very fortunate that we have 13,000 donors plus um, that support the United Way in a, a wide variety of different capacities. But there are a couple of things that we've heard loud and clear from the community, our nonprofits that we work with. Um, our legislators, you name it, that they've said, hey, you know what, this is a place for the United Way, we really need your help. And, and what's great is, you know, United Way has traditionally been known as the innovators. Mm -hmm. um, we have traditionally funded those projects and programs that the nonprofit organizations come back and say, you know, you were the first to do that because yeah. you believed in us and you gave us the tools to be successful. And so we're going to continue down that path, but we're going to elevate that in a, in a multitude of ways. And so one of those is um, we know that there's a lot of nonprofit organizations that have aspiring businesses that they want to utilize that help feed dollars into their mission. Sure. And there's so many great ideas out there, but they didn't really have the resources. And and coming from, I ran a startup company for um, a while, and one of the things that, and I mentored companies, um, startups for quite some time, and still do to this day. And I was like, why don't we do this for the nonprofit sector? Why don't we give them those tools sure. so, so that they can diversify their funding portfolio? And so uh, we partnered with the Social Enterprise Greenhouse, um, okay. the Team Rocks, and uh, we're all, uh, uh, announcing the Nonprofit Innovation Lab. This is going to be a 22-week program for 10 nonprofits who um, did went through a quick pitch competition okay. uh, to win their spot. Kind of sounds like Shark Tank. It's a little Shark Tank. -ish. I like it. I like it. And, um, and they'll be going through this process. Well, they'll be partnered with coaches and mentors, both in the nonprofit and for-profit, 
uh, sector to help build their business wow. um, that then will then feed into supporting their mission and their nonprofit organizations. And um, at the end of this, we'll be doing a Shark Tank-like public event nice. where folks will be able to see the top five organizations. Okay. They will get to vote via social media, okay. and those votes will help determine who gets the grant dollars moving forward. If there was ever a time, ladies and gentlemen, to click that like, follow, subscribe button, that'd be now. Live United RI. There you go. Yep. You go follow them online, which is, everything's there. 401 gives. Talk yeah. to me about that. So the other thing that we heard loud and clear, you know, 18% of the workforce here in Rhode Island is made up of nonprofit professionals. Wow. So when I say nonprofit is kicking butt here mm -hmm. in the state, they are. They're solving huge problems. We're such there. a good state, aren't we? We We're are. Just a good so little great. state. We're just so cute. We are fabulous. <laughs> we are small but mighty, man. And yeah. and that, in the nonprofit sector, is no exception to that. You know, there is thousands of nonprofits that many to which you don't even realize you may be using. Yeah. It could be that your parent is going to a senior center and that's a nonprofit organization. It could be that you're calling an organization for services and that's a nonprofit organization. There are nonprofit organizations supporting you and your family everywhere that you go. Right. And I don't think in our state we do enough to really amplify how awesome the nonprofit sector is. Sure. One of the things that I've seen in other states and other communities is they've done statewide giving days or region-wide giving days more around, of course we want to raise, we want to raise a million dollars for the nonprofit community sure. on 401 Gives Day, which is going to be April 1st, 401, hello, Four. 401. Oh, wow, look at that. Thank you. It's like a day that was made for Rhode Island. It was totally made for Rhode Island and um, our hope is uh, to raise a million dollars for the nonprofit community, but really build awareness yeah. about what the nonprofit community is doing in the state. So we're really excited about it. I think there's always the stigma out there that nonprofit can mean uh, non up to date mm. technology or non um, non diversified when it comes to mm -hmm. em employing the best possible out there. You guys and, and girls, just the whole United Way, you're you're really doing that. The thing that I didn't know uh, until I had my interview a little over a year ago with Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, 100% of the donations that go into the United Way yep. go to the designated charity or or organization yep. that you choose because there is a grant that's been set up which is your essentially your operations budget. Yeah, so we were really fortunate. Actually, one of the only United Ways in the country that have this. Um, we Royal Little, who was the founder of Textron, okay. bestowed upon us a, a trust of um, a nice chunk that is uh, paying for all administrative and fundraising costs. And so every dollar that someone gives, it goes right back out into the community. Whether that be through, you wanna designate it to your favorite nonprofit organization or through our Community Impact Fund, which is our investment account, as we talked about, to invest in innovative programs that are happening across the state. So, so yeah, incredible. we're very fortunate to have that. And, and that changes the conversation. Right, um, because you know, and we re we run. I often say we're a mission-driven business. Yep. Um, we are business first. Mission is our focus. We're community focused, yep. but we have to run. Nonprofit organizations have to run like a strong business. Sure. And so we hear these things all the time that you mentioned. Our technology is not up to speed, and you know, nonprofit organizations aren't investing in things like corporations are. We're 94 years old. Yeah. We got there somehow. Right, yeah. and you have to get there in order. To, in order to get there, you have to be a great business. You're doing and, good, and that's critically important. You guys are doing great. You're doing yeah. great. You take the information that you compile over years and decades, mm -hmm. really, um, and you use it to further that mission of good, not only financially but also uh, impacting how. Uh, legislation and and you know just really how government functions as well and the government relies on you for a lot of uh, that information mm -hmm. what, what is you know as we're coming up on uh, you know the, the Rhode Island House and Senate they're coming oh, back yeah. into session this week yep. and, and you know we're doing this in January 2020 mm -hmm. what is kind of the the mission right now I, I understand it's something having to do really with housing because that's a problem it's or, a or problem, will be yeah. a problem it, it, it already is it's a crisis okay. here in the state and okay. I think um, I know there's been a lot of conversation about education, and rightfully so. I think we have some work to do in the education sector. I have more than enough work to do in the education sector. But I have been often saying, and our team says it on a routine basis, until we ensure that these kids are safe and sound and have a roof over their head, yeah. we can't 
anticipate that those kids are going to be able to focus in the classroom, sure. right? Because they're making their parents are making critical choices, and in the in the state of Rhode Island, that is a huge issue. This Cost, is not a Providence issue. No, 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 no. And then Providence is an example. We have a two percent vacancy rate in rentals right now. Yeah. Um, normal is about five or six, wow. which means someone is evicted or someone needs to find it. There's nowhere else to go. So yeah. that's one issue. I think also what we really have to be mindful of is housing is not just around homelessness. That's critically important and, sure. and we have and we have great organizations who are tackling that. But we have to be realize that housing is also affecting what we call our working poor. These okay. are folks who have jobs who are have multiple jobs sure. and the cost of living is just too high because the supply is too low. Yeah. And so um, housing is a critical issue in the fact that 35% of Rhode Islanders are what's called housing cost burdened, which means they're paying more than 30% of their monthly income just for the roof over their head, right. which means they're making decisions as to do they take their medications that month? Are they going to be able to eat um, as frequently as they should? These are the decisions that our neighbors are facing, yeah. and housing is at the core of that. Sure. There's a number of challenges from a legislative perspective. Um, there is no funding at the, leg at the state level for housing. Traditionally, in other states, there is some type of supply, demand, supports, tax incentives, others that are helping to support that. Traditionally, what Rhode Island has done is, is supported bond referendums, and we're very grateful for those, but those have been band-aids. Um, yeah. And the reason is, is that the last bond referendum, I think, was able to produce 907 units of housing, which is great. We need 34,000. Yeah. So if every three years we're going to put another 900 out, it's not going to fix the problem. Yeah. So we got some work to do in housing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all. It's, it's amazing uh, just the in this 16 minutes, 15 minutes we've been talking, yeah. how many different avenues we've gone down. Not literally, I mean, <laughs> I mean I, I, I've done pretty good. Yeah. Uh, streets included, yep. a few parkways. Couple. We're gonna go somewhere. Yeah. Um, but it, it's amazing how many just different topics we've talked yep. about in this short period of time yep. that the United Way is, is part of. If if folks want to get involved, uh, whether it be on an individual basis mm -hmm. or a, a, a corporate basis, if we you know if we have yep. business leaders that are, are watching this right now, mm -hmm. what are we doing? Yeah. I, I mean, two one one is great, and yep. and that's 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 awesome. But what's the what's that next level if yep. we really want to take it to the next level? So there's a number of things that, that we, I always often say, consider giving your time, talent, or treasure, okay. and or treasure, right? Okay. So, you know, we, there are nonprofit organizations throughout the state, including the, the United Way, that need you. They need your expertise. Mm -hmm. um, whether if you are uh, in the tech space, there are lots of nonprofits that need advisement on new tools and things to consider. Um, if you want to provide uh, and volunteer on a board and a committee, our nonprofit community needs you. Yeah. Um, and so really think about what is your passion and what's most important to you and, and call that nonprofit sure. and say, I want to give back. But, you know, our community also needs your support. And, and so we have lots of volunteer opportunities. You can go to our website, which is liveunitedri.org. Okay. And on the website, we run the Volunteer Center of Rhode Island. So if you're interested in volunteering, all volunteer opportunities are up there. We also run a number of family volunteer events every year. And we have one coming up in February, which we would love to have sure. um, folks involved. It's a free event. It sells out Perfect. Um, with great families who want to um, participate. Um, also, you can give. Uh, okay. through the United Way w in your corporate mm -hmm. office. Um, if you don't have a campaign in your corporate office, give me a jingle. Let's talk. Let's yeah, talk so. about that. And, um, but also, uh, you can give through our website as well. And then also give on 401 Gives Day. If everybody gave a couple of dollars on 401 Gives Day, a million would be easy peasy. Sure. So we hope that you'll uh, consider doing that. But there's lots of uh, stuff, information on our website as well as we're really active on social media, Live United RI is, um, is our handle. Um, we would love to have folks part of the conversation. Our community cannot change. Right. Our community cannot be strengthened. Our community cannot grow without each and every one of us. We have to take yeah. that role and we have to have that sense of ownership and accountability to make Rhode Island great mm -hmm. and make Rhode Island its best. And in order to do that, it's gonna take all of us. And, and that's why I'm home. 
Yeah. That's why I came home because I love the state and the people in it. Um, I want to see it flourish, um, but it's going to take our collective to be able to do that. So, so. Ladies and gentlemen, she is Courtney Nicolato. She is, uh, she'll come to your business. She'll come to your Anytime. organization and speak about the wonderful things that are happening. But folks, if you are in a position where you need some assistance or you want to find out more, just follow the links and if you have to, dial 211, 200 languages. I like that. It's ready languages. to go. Yep. So, Courtney, I'm going to get you back to your office, you. your water view. We got view work to do. View. We got stuff to do, ladies and gentlemen. So, follow them along. It's going to be an awesome 2020 for the United Way. Courtney, thanks for hopping in the car. Thank you, Ben. It's great to be here.